the conference because there are no questions, no e e equations. And just uh, something about uh, dynamical system as its own, <coughs> their own. <coughs> so, but have applications and just uh, uh, it's a talk about uh, uh, dynamical systems and in the same that uh, classic, more or less classical region. So we take some map of some space not necessary of uh, which one subspace. And uh, we are interested in uh, more or less common properties uh, for uh, this map or collection of maps and just iteration of map. But um, of course, uh, that, uh, uh, we can extend our notation uh, dynamical system to get something like a flow, so it's very, very popular to start. Uh, and uh, uh, we fix some uh, we work uh, uh, in the settings of uh, as measurable structure. So we have some. Um, we are interested not in one orbit uh, with respect to some map, but uh, about uh, orbit of uh, 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 sufficiently large set in terms of space. So we have iteration for some map and. Uh, uh, to get uh, something, just what is the more or less um, <coughs> not essential map, essential set. So it's just uh, with, we, we um, associate with fast space some measure and uh, sigma algebra of set. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, a realization dynamic. So uh, a, a few. Uh, uh, and are interesting in uh, um, uh, classification of dynamical system in this settings. Uh, this is a sufficiently huge object, and many many different uh, dynamical systems exist on one special space. And space is not necessarily uh, um, uh, uh, which one, because uh, uh, um, not we, we consider. Uh, whole um, maps, not necessarily smooth maps and uh, continuous maps in some space. In some, some kind of just uh, there is a theorem in measurable dynamics uh, that uh, all spaces are uh, isomorphic. And just we have, uh, we try to classify, it just, uh, it just uh, I talk about some classification on realization of invariance of uh, dynamical systems. And so uh, 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 we consider isomorphism in the same in the uh, the following sense uh, that uh, we have a, a one one to one map uh, on first space uh, such that which preserves structure and our uh, setting structure is just uh, measure so uh, uh, we uh, try to classify uh, to make some classification of dynamical system with respect to some isomorphism. Because sometimes in practice we have the two dynamical system and we, uh, we can study uh, each one uh, separately, but if they are isomorphic, so we need to uh, study just one object and to say that the second one is the same. And uh, it's more or less uh, sufficiently important in different kind of uh, in, 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 for different senses, uh, uh, sometimes to know that uh, there is uh, the, the list of dynamical system and no more. So it's just, just, just a classification of dynamical system and uh, up to isomorphism. But sometimes we uh, apply a more special isomorphism because something like preserving a, a smooth structure and continuous structure. But no, no, this one because we, we have a lot of different dynamical system, more dynamical system, as we don't restrict ourselves to smooth actions and smooth uh, uh, and even continuous uh, maps and actions. So just uh, a few, uh, uh, but uh, space of dynamical system, if you fix uh, some fast space, is. is uh, 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 on which uh, a dynamical system act. Uh, 
So it's just uh, more or less a good space. And of course, there is this uh, notion of a typical and just uh, um, polished space, uh, complete separable space with respect to standard topology. If, if we uh, try, uh, we say, say that the dynamical system is sufficiently close if they act more or less the same on uh, each uh, measurable set. So it's just with point wise topology, standard strict topology. And in this respect, this topology is a good, nice space uh, or whole dynamical system on some path space X. X uh, is just maybe one dimensional torus or two dimensional torus, it doesn't matter because they are isomorphic, not in the topological sense, for example, two dimensional um, torus in one dimensional torus, but in measurable sense, it is isomorphic and measure on. <laughs> Two torus is just, um, with respect to this homomorphism, is just measure on one dimensional torus, just uh, Lebesgue's mesh to Lebesgue's mesh. So it's just uh, a fast space is a good uh, for this setting is a good one. So we don't need to care about which space we consider. And uh, but we have a lot of different dynamical system on one special space. Just all we need is just fix uh, measure uh, space and measure Borel measure, for example, on this space. <coughs> okay, and just one of uh, uh, invariance. So if you try to invariance, it's just uh, one of, of way to uh, make a classification and just to give uh, a lot of invariance. So we just separate uh, different dynamical system, and so just. Uh, one of way to uh, study classification is just to give a lot of uh, invariance with respect to some isomorphism. If it, uh, some some uh, show that if uh, invariance is enough, that we, we have say uh, two dynamical systems are isomorphic or not, two objects are isomorphic or not. <coughs> and uh, one of uh, standard classical uh, invariance is just uh, Associating unitary operator on L2x nu is just unitary operator. If it if here is uh, uh, t is just uh, will be served for dynamical system. It's just map on space x, and uh, t hat is just uh, a joint operator, Kupman operator, it's more or less standard, and. Uh, 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 for classification of unitary operators, uh, nothing special. It's just simple one. It's just there is this complete classification for unitary operator on some space. It's just uh, it's all uh, we need to know uh, measure sitting on a unique circle, spe so-called spectral measure, and multiplicity function, and no more. So it just there is this uh, standard. Com a complete classification you hold unitary operator of Hilbert space uh, because L2 X is just of course a Hilbert space, the parable Hilbert space. And uh, but it's not the same for dynamical system. Associate even but T hat is a classical invariant. And so if uh, uh, we have di two dynamical systems uh, uh, corresponding to operators, if uh, uh, operators not unitary equivalent, of course, the dynamical system will be uh, also not, not equivalent. So it's just some uh, invariant, but it's not, of course, it's not enough to classify, classify a dynamical system. There is another classical one, uh, entropy invariant. It's not of uh, a spectral origin, and many, many others. And, uh, but uh, well, let me. Uh, is about a multiplicity function. Uh, so it just uh, will be somehow used in next and just to understand what happened next. And we use uh, this invariant to say something about uh, uh, a dynamical system we uh, try to understand and try to study. Okay. Where M2 is a set of potential ranges of oh, the same. And one uh, is more or less standard object to, to get uh, something with two dynamical systems are uh, how common they are. 
is just a uh, um, technique of uh, joining technique. So it's just uh, in theory of probabilities of the couplings. Uh, it's just two measures, measures uh, associated with two dynamical system. Uh, and uh, study measure uh, with two dynamical system, we can say what is more or less common to to their these two dynamical systems. And uh, uh, but uh, from other point of view, it just also can be considered like one of um, sufficiently interesting invariants for uh, a one dynamical system. Because we can associate with this uh, construction, we have one dynamical system and uh, a bit specific construction, but uh, we have one more invariant of dynamical system. And of course, uh, also interesting what happens with this invariant. So uh, just uh, uh, we, we take uh, x cross x. And uh, take T cross T, just Cartesian product of uh, two, uh, one dynamical system. And I uh, interesting in measures on this space X cross X, uh, whose both pro pro projections and marginals are just new. So it's just projection of first coordinate and second coordinate uh, gives, um, uh, gives standard measure new. And mu is the biggest mesh, for example, on X. X can be considered like one dimensional torus, and uh, zero one interval not, doesn't matter for this point of view because at one point is what essential for my me measure, uh, the biggest measure. It's now up to our convenience. We consider next uh, space X. Uh, okay, and, and just, uh, uh, the, of course, it's no, nothing interesting for t cross 2, t cross t, uh, if we consider just Cartesian product of mu cross mu. And so it's just standard construction and course of analysis of uh, students. And so from this point of view, uh, t cross t is just uh, uh, standard dynamical system. Nothing interesting can be uh, studied, uh, was studied in classical law. Another one a bit different is just a measure sitting on diagonal of x cross x. Now let me remind you that x can be considered like uh, 0, 1, and so x cross x is just square. And diagonal, of course, it's just invariant uh, for t cross t. And of course, we can uh, uh, consider measure with support, supporting on this uh, diagonal. And of course, uh, it will be invariant with respect to t cross t if uh, mu is invariant with respect of uh, uh, t in base. And we uh, just just uh, a map of uh, bias on the diagonal. And uh, uh, let me remind that image of measure is always uh, measure. If here is this continuous map uh, based on diagonal. Just uh, okay, and um, one more, uh, more or less standard object in measurable dynamics, and sometimes it's called ergodic theory, but more common, by the way, ergodic theory, but not measurable dynamics. Uh, uh, that um, uh, er ergodic cell journey. Uh, uh, why? Because, uh, of course, the uh, usual standard thing that if uh, 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 there is this. Uh, some invariant subspace, sub subset, sorry. Um, so we can restrict our dynamical system to this uh, subset and uh, uh, study this um, um, dynamical system of this subset and uh, have complete information. And a uh, uh, different uh, remaining set is also invariant. So we have a split uh, subspace space on two components and more. It depends on uh, 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 t or, or mu we consider. And uh, of course, uh, it's a standard thing just uh, for er ergodic, so dynamical system uh, uh, splits into uh, dynamical systems sitting on uh, invariant uh, er components. So just standard thing, just nothing more, just 
uh, we consider some kind of primary uh, dynamical system sitting on a set which is not divisible into invariant essential parts. You say that uh, one orbit is, of course, uh, uh, invariant, the remaining part is also, but one orbit usually, and uh, this uh, theory is just uh, of near zero measure and uh, not essential like invariant. So such uh, splitting is not uh, 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 not interesting. And, uh, and, but also there is this uh, uh, So you see, uh, let me stress on a remark. Mm. Uh, uh, as I said before, that if measure is just Cartesian product of measure, it's not interesting. And a di diagonal measure is all just sitting on one graph, or it's, uh, diagonal. But uh, mm, uh, this uh, uh, remark says that, of course, there is this something like theorem Fubini for uh, a, a measure on Cartesian product, so it's on, on square. It's not necessarily for a Lebesgue's one. It's just saying that uh, uh, some measure on uh, a square is just consists of con so-called canonical distribution, let's say, or probability theory. So it just can be split into uh, measures sitting on fibers, new X, and uh, some measure is just not, not necessarily which one, it's just this guy. And so, uh, 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 and uh, e easily can be con uh, say that if uh, uh, measures sitting on fibers you have uh, some uh, atoms, so because of uh, some er ergodicity of measure in all, we have uh, atoms automatically on each fiber. So some because what of this ergodicity dynamical system we, we have that on each fiber uh, measure. Uh, will be have the same atom, or almost the same atoms in the sense of, of coordinates. If uh, on one fiber is, for example, uh, uh, n, n atoms, on uh, next, uh, a, a, each one for, for o, 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 almost all uh, fiber will be the same uh, number of uh, atoms. Moreover, uh, of the same uh, mass. Uh, so this say, that formula, if we uh, J sub n is just more or less uh, uh, interesting object because uh, we consider not continuous uh, measure on each fiber and not uh, uh, measures sitting on fibers on one atom and nothing more. But we consider uh, just a measure sitting on n atoms of each uh, fiber. So it's just a uh, measure sitting on n graphs uh, of uh, square. Uh, and uh, the, uh, atoms are separated because of ergodicity. So it's just uh, if we restrict ourselves on uh, supports of, say, atoms on each fiber, we have uh, uh, an invariant subset. And because of ergodicity, no. It is this essential. This means that the remaining part is uh, uh, is new. It's nothing, almost nothing, just of zero measure. So we have that uh, just uh, explaining that j, uh, j sub n is just uh, more or less interesting convex standard. If we uh, split uh, our dynamical system in sub part, so uh, sometimes it may happen that uh, we have not one fiber but n fiber, and remaining will be continuous, but on each fiber will be continuous measure. So we have uh, the whole measure nu is just sum of continuous part on, uh, it will be uh, formally not, uh, but uh, um, discrete part on each fiber. So just, uh, but um, here, this uh, research is not completed and it's sufficiently new. And uh, of course, uh, 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 a question arises 
uh, what uh, what is the dynamical system of t cross t uh, with new if uh, new is sitting on n graphs just on square n graph and uh, for one uh, graph it's easy for uh, you, you see FJ is just set of graph joinings or some so basically so we just can be uh, easily uh, proved but here s is not uh, uh, near a uh, or b uh, so z s to b which is like so it's just uh, on graph is just in the sense that uh, uh, we have a graph s uh, y is equal to s of x and uh, measures sitting on this if uh, we consider a uh, uh, measure which is sitting on uh, uh, okay uh, um, so we, we, we can say a bit more, it's just equivalent, it's not, nothing interesting. I, I, I mentioned before just uh, measure sitting on diagonal, but uh, each one, if uh, we consider measure uh, with fibers, uh, atoms uh, on each fiber, uh, is just a simple one, just uh, sitting on, uh, on graphs, and moreover, we can say that S, is just uh, also a dynamical system uh, on this space uh, X, and uh, moreover commuting this T, nothing more. So and uh, conversely, if you take S commuting this T, that uh, of, uh, this measure called delta sub S is just uh, 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 joining, joining of uh, uh, T, and of course uh, the set of joinings. Uh, uh, are uh, mm, associated to dynamical system is just uh, as it is can be seen that invariant of dynamical system. So we have one more object which can be more or less interesting for a study and separate different dynamical systems like entropy invariant, like uh, Euterian invariant. Uh, next. Uh, and moreover, uh, some, some simple for, for purposes to, uh, to um, uh, for purposes to understand uh, what to study uh, next. Okay, uh, so just uh, 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 first uh, saying, of course, uh, isomorphic. So we. we uh, we we, we 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 try to understand and to realize which one uh, which one uh, we, uh, what kind of uh, of dynamical system t cross t and new new um, is and uh, so uh, uh, um, how many uh, and uh, uh, what is the pro uh, uh, different pro Another dynamical properties of uh, this object, and uh, 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 f first rem remark is uh, very very uh, simple: uh, that uh, if we, uh, um, uh, dynamical system on T cross T, uh, for formally for topological sense, of course, T cross T doesn't depend on a choice of new and just uh, topologically points and two points. But uh, form, uh, uh, in fact, if we take different measure, we have a uh, different dynamical system. And uh, like for Bernoulli shifts, uh, we have uh, one space and one shift, but they are different because of different Bernoulli measure we, have, uh, we, we can uh, take on the space. And this is the same. Formally, T cross T topological is the same, that depends on. But uh, the dynamical system is different in measurable settings because, uh, uh, but uh, if uh, new is just uh, sitting on one graph, so it's just nothing more than T. So it's just isomorphism, uh, like a diagonal to base projection. And we have, uh, with respect to this isomorphism, 
uh, t cross t on diagonal uh, comes to just t on that. It's nothing more. This is a sigma means uh, one more that uh, spectrum of t is just part of spectrum of v. It's also more or less uh, on a function uh, depending on one left, one coordinate. It's just Gilbert Hilbert subspace, and uh, this is invariant with respect to whole t cross t uh, corresponding to unitary operator. And uh, also simple, more or less. And more interesting and uh, uh, following property, if uh, t m t of uh, remain just a multiplicity function, that, that t is just a simple spectrum. Um, so unitary operator corresponding to dynamical system in Hilbert space is just uh, operator with simple spectrum. So there, this is so called a cyclic uh, function. So just shifts of uh, some functions, uh, a form uh, of uh, linear combination and closure form whole Hilbert space, uh, and, but it's not part of just whole uh, Hilbert space. And uh, this is interesting because uh, and for uh, next, and um, in this case, if we take uh, in base, uh, so uh, um, uh, V is also have uh, sim has simple spectrum, if and only if uh, measure is sitting on one graph or two graphs and a bit less. So in this case, automatically, uh, spectrum will be uh, uh, not simple. It is interesting for applications, uh, for applications, and uh, because uh, uh, one of uh, still uh, unsolved problem in measurable dynamics to understand uh, uh, what is the spectrum of uh, uh, unitary operator which comes from dynamical system so-called Koopman operator. Uh, still, still unknown. And for this point, of course, uh, it's not, not simple spectrum automatically. If we, we take a uh, uh, map, map on, uh, not uh, with mu, not on one, one graph, so in this case, automatically, we have uh, not simple spectrum. Okay. but. Uh, this set of uh, measures, of course, is a convex compact metrical space with respect to weak topology for any t. It is also uh, more or less obvious. It's just standard measure, standard topology on uh, uh, on space of measure on uh, x or cross x or x. Or in this case, for x cross x. Uh, one of, in my opinion, a good theorem. In this case, if we take uh, uh, so we have a uh, uh, convex compact metrical space. It's just uh, also co convex means that uh, some some of two measures for like diagonal or um, mu cross mu automatically or uh, white automatically also invariant uh, measure element of this space. But mm, typically. So it's just uh, in whole space, convex space of measures, uh, it happens that uh, uh, typically uh, this whole space consists of measures with sitting on one graph. So it's just on Cartesian product, we can whole spaces, whole measures, and but typically we can remove a not essential set almost every measure uh, will be just sitting on graph. This will be a surprise theorem. Uh, and with, but of course, we consider not whole measures on, on square, but uh, t, t invariant measures, but it's closed subset of measures, and so also whole, uh, whole uh, uh, convex set. Uh, typically, uh, the set of joining um, so it's just uh, measures variant. It just uh, consists of mainly uh, from measures sitting on one graph. Uh, so it's just in typical situation, V is just isomorphic to T because of first remark we have said before. And uh, J sub N is not a good space because it's an accession set. 
a subset of uh, joinings. And uh, um, if interesting in realization of dynamical system like AV, uh, so um, it's a more or less interesting object, as I said, because of uh, spectral invariance and uh, others. Uh, so it's just implicit criteria to understand if you take some dynamical system, can be uh, this dynamical system like AV for some T cross T and some new is the question to realize in this subset. So, uh, by, but why we study uh, subsets of dynamical system? Because, uh, as I said before, uh, whole space of dynamical system is huge. It's still no uh, classification. And, uh, it doesn't understand. Yeah. And uh, so, just uh, like Bernoulli shifts, like uh, uh, shifts on uh, one dimensional torus to dimensional torus is a sub subset we study, and it's, it's, this, uh, this, this subset is sufficiently, uh, sufficiently interesting, sufficiently new, it's sufficiently not so well understood at this moment. Uh, and what implicit criteria of, for uh, uh, so dynamical system is just uh, if of new, is just uh, this uh, so called uh, in the, um, factors. Two factors, uh, F1, F, F, F2 is sub, maybe it can be considered like uh, in some space we have uh, invariant sub algebra. Two invariant sub algebras are for this map, so take map, and uh, uh, this map is just V for some, so it can be realized like in, this, in the framework of this construction. Uh, if there is this two sigma invariant sub algebra, F1 and F2, which are not equal, such that, uh, that uh, on such subset of set, uh, V is just uh, is preserves, so it's just invariant subalgebra, F of Fi is Fi, and uh, if we, we uh, our dynamical system restricts to Fi, it's just P, so it's the same uh, for F1 or F2, it's just isomorphic we have. Uh, on sigma algebra as with dynamical system are the same. And uh, factors that correspond to Fi, so it's just projections on the sigma subalgebra, uh, it's just n to one. But it is implicit criteria is there something, if you have dynamical system, there is some, some invariant two subalgebras, a special, a bit special uh, uh, <laughs> property. Uh, is that, uh, this remark, uh, uh, I discussed before. Uh, so, and no information about fibers or graphs. So it's just um, implicit, implicit, and um, uh, some kind that can be uh, used, and can be, can, cannot be mainly useful uh, to understand uh, if some dynamical system can be realized this one guy or not. Uh, and second one, that even in the case J sub n, uh, not necessarily SI is measure preserving maps. So I'm uh, seeking on graphs, of course, and, and graphs, but not necessarily measure preserving maps. So it's just uh, and a bit uh, different approach. So we take uh, a support of measures uh, seated on n graphs, we take and are interesting in uh, measures to be sitting on th this graph. Uh, own uh, collection of graphs, and uh, uh, but uh, another uh, question arises: uh, support needs to be uh, sufficiently good. Of course, if you take some gra uh, some graph and take t cross t, so because of topological structures, not necessarily invariant with respect to t cross t, but we need to be uh, support needs to be invariant with respect to t cross t. And a bit uh, different, but uh, advantages is sickness, good space, uh, but no, but, uh, and the second, even if support is sufficiently good, uh, uh, it may happen probably uh, that uh, not, not too many T in base we can consider. And also the question arises how many T? Uh, 
if we take uh, some support, uh, we, uh, which property T cross T uh, new is equal to. And uh, uh, making, uh, but uh, simple, 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 and it's just diagonal on shift or diagonal with respect to uh, mm, here is T I sub N. It's just shift on uh, I o over N. And so just uh, alpha to alpha plus uh, I over N. Uh, it's just on one dimensional torus, it's just. Uh, of course, it's just shift. It's just standard uh, dynamical system. It uh, uh, corresponds to map graph. It's just a measure preserving. Just shift on um, not, not irrational angle. It's just on I O over N angle. Uh, so uh, we uh, consider a very, very explicit construction. Diagonal on shift diagonals uh, more or less regularly. One over N. Two uh, or, or, and, and so on. It's just we have on uh, square uh, diagonals and diagonals, diagonals. So you have uh, n n supports. Of course, diagonals invariant. So we we need to remove because it's just a whole uh, t cross t on whole uh, collection of fibers. It's just uh, one uh, del delta is just a diagonal uh, correspond to i is equal to zero. Is just uh, just diagonal, and of course uh, invariant. Uh, just uh, uh, any case, in any case, uh, remaining part will be uh, invariant. But is this guide also invariant? So we have uh, remove to get some called ergodicity. An interesting guide because for diagonal it's not interesting. Uh, dynamic dynamic on t, t cross t on this space. It's just t. Uh, so we have a more or less uh, structure, and oh, but not each T uh, 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 is uh, invariant for this measure. And we discussed if, if and uh, uh, we, 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 we take a measure sitting on n graphs, so measures is uh, un uniform. So on each atom is. is uh, one over n uh, atom y of, of this atom. So uh, uh, if uh, mm, so, um, new no freedom to 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 uh, 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 new uh, and uh, so just some restriction on t, but not essential. So just uh, uh, we have the in base is not uh, every dynamical system in base act. So, so that uh, t cross t new is equal to new. Uh, just uh, some restriction on preserves uh, uh, mm, uh, ho sufficiently large uh, sigma algebra for s uh, for t over one of n. So, uh, uh, mm, mm, and uh, just, this is just a small restriction. Uh, and we have uh, sufficiently many of t. And theorem uh, proved because of different uh, um, different purposes. That, uh, 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 a typical dynamical system is not simple, so structure for joinings consists not only uh, diagonals and uh, graphs on the uh, cross nerve. Okay, mm. but uh, there exists. Uh, uh, Joining uh, for T uh, sitting on uh, this guy we discussed before, it's just uh, uh, on n minus one uh, uh, fibers with respect to T i of n. Uh, so by uh, uh, changing in the morphism, uh, so we consider another realization of typical T. We have uh, that uh, it can be considered like uh, for T cross T like element of V. More, more over uh, sitting on environment one graph. Uh, okay, just theorem saying saying that v, if you consider v, so in base it's enough of dynamical system. Typical dynamical system t uh, can be realized like in base. So uh, this, for this purposes, 
this restriction is not essential. It's a huge class of dynamical system V, such, um, such a projection, almost every dynamical system T. So for almost every dynamical system, we can uh, construct T cross T and get uh, uh, invariant measures sitting on N minus one graph. On moreover, this support on uh, shifts of diagonal. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, we uh, study this uh, guy. Uh, for purposes, uh, and, and free is baby case, uh, what the strategy, what, what uh, for V, what can we say about V? Uh, for N uh, equal to, it's not a baby case because uh, as I said, diagonal is, um, can be removed. If uh, another guy also, uh, and uh, sitting on graph, it's not interesting. But uh, more or less interesting case is N equal to free. Uh, Baby case. In this case, uh, it happens uh, that for typical transformation with certain uh, 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 restriction to get uh, that new new will be invariant with respect to T cross T, we get that uh, uh, V is have uh, sufficiently uh, standard the classical structure. It's just Robinson said it's classical uh, dynamical system transformations. Uh, is the same with this theory uh, with uh, unusual spectral properties. It's just uh, uh, classical. So we have uh, a lot of uh, dynamic systems. Star means uh, star means uh, that we consider this group uh, this uh, with respect to multiplication. Uh, so we have isomorphism, two elements and two elements. Uh, but uh, formally, uh, last coordinate is uh, consists of three elements: zero, one, and two. Uh, okay, just um, okay. What happens if n is more than three? Uh, uh, here also, so we have even in the case of N3, we have a huge uh, numbers of different dynamical systems. Because, uh, of course, uh, just whole can be realized uh, in this class. Um, uh, and here it's also the same uh, restriction of um, this, of course, certain restriction uh, for T. And uh, this implies that uh, uh, v is automatically a skew product, so called uh, very well known. And um, sigma x on fibers is just permutations. But permutations, and so if we restrict ourselves to a special permutation, even in this case, we have a lot of interesting uh, 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 dynamical system sitting in here. So it's just uh, not so complete research. But we see that uh, uh, even we restrict ourselves, restrict ourselves, restrict ourselves. In this case, we have a huge uh, uh, number of uh, different dynamical systems. But uh, interesting, not simple spectrum for uh, purposes of uh, pre pre previous research, which is very common. It was done in, in this theory in, in, for specialists in uh, measurable dynamics and energetic theory. So we have even if we restrict ourselves to special uh, uh, per, uh, uh, to uh, a special path class per permutation, uh, so called affine. Even in this case, uh, we have uh, the same analog, and we have uh, uh, that uh, some uh, restriction, and we have. Uh, uh, almost finished. Uh, uh, so we have uh, that um, uh, collection of fibers. On each fibers, is, we, we, we get ergodic dynamical system with uh, the same property, and we, we split uh, on, K, on, uh, on, on K 
uh, collection of fibers on uh, to each collection of fibers we have a uh, um, dynamical system for the same with nice uh, um, spectral property here so we have a realization uh, in, on this form uh, many uh, well sufficiently well known in this theory dynamical system before okay and uh, no, uh, it's just some properties about this uh, restriction, but it's not interesting uh, for um, our uh, specialist in uh, uh, equations. Uh, and so something about uh, what each each uh, dynamical system acts on each um, collection of uh, fibers. Uh, so we have uh, some realization and understanding that this class sufficiently huge and needs to be more or less be more uh, to, to study uh, what, what here exactly may happen, which but they are usually not in single spectrum. Okay. okay. Well, thank you okay. for attention. Thank you for. And the question, please. Uh, would you be so kind to show a bibliography? Okay, uh, no, it's still under the pa your papers, which are connected with your lecture, and maybe some papers. So some other. under construction and. Um, uh, um, uh, is element of not so new research. Uh, it was uh, uh, some, but um, uh, still no paper. Sorry. Ah, so results yes, are new. Uh, some some uh, construction, uh, complete and distinct what can be done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. More questions, please. Okay. I have almost the same question. Uh, can you say a few words about history of the problem? Uh, where do this problem, does this problem uh, come from, the KPS and in this story, uh, the origination of idea? There is some other publication, some, I see. Uh, yes, close uh, related publication about uh, study to joining, joining of uh, con uh, concrete uh, dynamical system to understand uh, the you space. Can, uh, uh, some names. Uh, for example, who is the key person? Uh, um, uh, usually, it's not a uh, Russian mathematician. Uh, yes, okay, but French mathematicians, and, uh, American mathematicians, Poland mathematicians. But some most important name. Measurable dynamics. Uh, no, no, related to this problem. Where does this problem Maybe come Katok, from? Maybe Katok, I don't know. Katok. Identification yeah. problem. Katok. Yeah. Yes, he considered that. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. Semi, a bit semi. They consider it, it is this for the realization problem. Yes. Yeah, no, no. Uh, no, not uh, as I said. It's just, just um, related questions. Uh, yes, related notion questions. of joinings, uh, yes. joinings, uh, just just um, object uh, study for different purposes. In, in my opinion, for J sub n, it's just uh, new uh, subclass. For J one, and just to study not uh, T cross T this measure, but um, T and try to understand. Uh, 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 the set of joinings, so-called minimal field joinings, is very popular. Yeah, yeah, so-called yeah, yeah. uh, study uh, research in, in uh, if you can take me not t cross t, but t cross t cross t cross t, so on. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, happens yeah. Uh, for um, uh, um, it's uh, cause related to other big problems, so uh, uh, mixing, a uh, careful mixing, uh, just also uh, some. Uh, Huge a uh, lot of papers in this sub area, like uh, invariant, like in, it's on its own. Okay. 
So it's just a T cross T. In, no, but as I said, it's an interesting guy because uh, a spectrum F automatically is not Okay. Thank you. More questions? Thank you. Okay, we have five, four minutes. Okay. okay. Now it is the time for the our second talk this morning session. Uh, the speaker Yuri Vasilevsky and there is some other authors. Uh, and the title you can see, but 
stable new American schemes for modeling the compressible fluid flows in time dependent domains. Okay, let's just start. Watch five minutes. So, thank you very much for the introduction. First of all, I want to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me. Um, Second, uh, this talk is a joint talk with Maxim Alshansky from uh, the University of Houston, Alexander Danilov and Alexander Lazovsky from the Institute of Numerical Mathematics. I have several affiliations, particular Institute of Numerical Mathematics and Sechenov University. Sechenov University is the largest medical university in Russia. Uh, first of all, uh, I have to give a disclaimer. By stable schemes, I understand schemes with uh, with uh, stability estimate. Because for nonlinear equations, stability is very com complicated issue. But if we can give a stability estimate for the solution, for the numerical solution, we treat this result as uh, as attribute of a stable scheme. From now on, stable schemes means schemes with stability estimate. Okay. So I will give three ideas. These ideas are not new. We just take them from different sources and combine them to get a stable scheme. The first idea is since we are dealing with moving domains, then numerically we have to deal with moving meshes, right? If the meshes are moving, then we have problems uh, to apply methods of lines. Methods of lines allows you to uh, apply separately uh, differentiation in time and differentiation in space. But if your mesh is moving, you cannot take finite discretization, finite difference of du over dt. And uh, one of the remedies for this problem is to reformulate your equations in moving domains in to equations in a steady reference domain. Of course, at the cost of new coefficients which appear in, in the equation. These coefficients are time dependent and solution dependent. This is the third, but if we reformulate this problem in a steady domain, then we, we can apply a method of lines. The method of lines. Second idea is that to get the most possible stable scheme, we have to take fully implicit scheme. Uh, so everything is moved to the next time step, right? But if you have nonlinear equations, unsteady equations, it means that on each time step you have a nonlinear system, system of nonlinear algebraic equations, right? And it means that on each time step you have to solve this nonlinear system. If we take time, if we are, talk, if we are talking about stable schemes, we Keep in mind that the time step may be large. If the time is large, then the, best, the reasonable uh, initial guess for your iterative solver for nonlinear equations is taken from the previous time step. But since the time step is large, the initial guess is far away from the solution, right? And your nonlinear system may solve a nonlinear solver, for instance, Newton method, may fail. So our idea is to linearize uh, the nonlinear algebraic system to get a linear system at each time step. We apply this linearization by extrapolation of certain of certain terms in time, and at each time step we get one system of linear algebraic equations to be solved. And since we apply a finite element method the system has a sparse matrix. 
And the third idea is uh, observation that uh, Taylor Hood finite elements, which means for stocks, for instance, problem, piecewise quadratic continuous uh, velocities and piecewise linears, uh, piecewise linear continuous pressures, uh, is a feasible compromise uh, for between the accuracy and uh, the coarseness of the computational grid. Um, first, it is LVB stable. Second, uh, we for three-dimensional problems, and we address three-dimensional problems, we can afford a very coarse unstructured tetrahedrization. Tetrahedrization is a computational grid composed of tetrahedra. In all examples I will show you, uh, the number of cells is uh, several tens of thousands, which for three-dimensional problems is very low number. Several tens of thousands cells, really a coarse mesh. And uh, since we have quadratic, uh, quadratic uh, uh, velocities and quadratic piecewise quadratic displacements, it means that um, on these types of meshes with tens of thousand cells, we have approximately few hundreds of uh, thousands of unknowns. So at each time step, we have to solve a sparse linear system with few hundred thousands of unknowns. And this means that we can apply a black box sparse direct factorizer. So we don't care about the method for solving the linear system. We just need several tens of cores of the computational cluster, and we can apply a black box, which is MOOMS, for instance. There are several black box technology for solving linear systems with sparse matrices. But for us, it is sufficient to have just several tens of cores of the computational class. And our typical computations for fluid structure iteration takes few hours. And we can pass through very tough benchmarks, three-dimensional benchmarks. So our computational methodology is based on using of, const of unstructured uh, tetrahedral uh, grids, uh, LBB stable pair, which I already mentioned for pressure and velocity, and uh, also displacements are also piecewise quadratic continuous. We use our open source software, Anis3D, for uh, discretization of uh, in space. We use uh, the MOOMS uh, black box parallel solver of linear system with sparse matrices. And as I mentioned, we use approximately several tens of cores, not, no more than 100 cores. It takes uh, several hours to compute. Now, three applications, three, three phenomena. First is the Navier-Stokes equations in moving domains. What are the prerequisites? So we have uh, a reference domain omega f, which is uh, mapped by a transformation xi to a physical domain. We can ignore gray, gray subdomains, which are walls of future vessels at the moment. So we have only fluid domain. And this uh, xi transformation is known explicitly. It is given by a sequence of moving meshes. I will show you the movie and you will see, understand how this Xi transformation uh, is given. Uh, and V and U denotes velocity and displacements in our reference domain omega F. And of course, uh, uh, transformation Xi is um, uh, defined uh, by a very simple formula uh, uh, based on the displacements, which are assumed to be known. These are displacements of mesh nodes. And then we can uh, define deformation gradient F and its determinant J, and we shall use uh, Cauchy stress tensor and pressures of pressure of velocity of fluid 
and we shall assume that the fluid is incompressible. Uh, equations which we are going to solve are split into two categories. The first category are equations which are independent of the user. So this is just the Navier-Stokes equation written in the physical domain. Uh, uh, and this is ILE formulation because acceleration uh, does not um, account uh, the transformation. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the uh, this is the inertia term, this is the viscous term, and we see uh, here extra factors, F, J. Uh, this is because uh, the Navier-Stokes equations, incompressible Navier-Stokes equations, are written in a steady reference domain, omega F, and this is because uh, the physical domain is moving and we have to pay by this displacement, a derivative of displacement. This is standard equation uh, when you wrote your equations in in steady domain, reference domain. Uh, Divergence-free equation, steady uh, incompressibility, incompressibility becomes uh, uh, this equation. Uh, again, we have ec extra factors uh, because we uh, write uh, this uh, fluid incompressibility restriction in uh, steady reference domain. And also constitutive relation, Newtonian for the Newtonian fluid also incorporates these factors F because it is written the reference domain. Okay, now these uh, are differential equations we are going to solve approximately. So we take integral formulation of this equation, uh, replace Sobolev and L2 uh, spaces for velocity and pressure by its finite element subspaces, standard finite uh, element parad paradigm, and this finite element subspace are piecewise quadratic velocity and piecewise linear continuous pressure. Pressures and uh, uh, discretize uh, um, acceleration term just uh, by finite difference time. And each term of these equations uh, contains only one uh, index uh, on the next time step, k. So all other fk uh, is known because fk is deformation gradient uh, based on known transformation psi, assume that it is known, and uh, Vk minus 1 and, uh, uh, is taken from the previous time step. So each term here has only one index k to be, to be computed. Here, 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 here. So this is nothing else but linear system of, system of linear algebraic equations. We perform linearization by extrapolation of, for instance, here inertia term uh, from the previous time steps. And uh, this uh, finite element system uh, scheme is first semi-implicit uh, in the sense that it produces one linear system per time step. It is first order in time because we take just backward early discretization in time for, for time derivative. But we can reformulate it as a second order discretization in time. And what is important is that it is, it is proven to be unconditionally stable in the sense that we provide stability estimate for the, for the numerical solution and the time step is not restricted by CFL restriction. It means that you can refine your mesh size in space as much as you want and still keep large time step. Of course, this large time step may not be very large because if uh, within your large, uh, within your time step, uh, the, the domain will uh, sweep a lot of distance, then it, it makes no sense in such discretization. But in our computations, we take only 100 or at most 1,000 time steps for all benchmarks. The time steps are really large. Um, okay, uh, this is um, uh, just uh, just a remark uh, how uh, this uh, stability estimate is shown. First of all, uh, we prove for uh, the finite element solution uh, the so-called energy balance uh, equation. 
Uh, and then, based on this energy balance, uh, we derive uh, the stability estimate. The energy balance equation is um, uh, a set uh, for, um, for a component of the velocity, uh, which um, is obtained from the decomposition of the velocity field into two parts, the known part uh, and uh, unknown part. The known part, V1, is uh, uh, the divergence-free uh, field, velocity field, vector field, which uh, has uh, uh, traces on the domain boundary equal to the velocity of the walls of psi t. And it is divergence-free. Uh, it is known that such, uh, such uh, divergence-free uh, finite element uh, discretization is exists. And uh, if we decompose the solution, the velocity solution into two parts, the known solution uh, due to the moving walls and the unknown uh, component, which is the remainder, then the stability estimate is given for the remainder. And it, the stability, the, this balance, energy balance, has a very simple, very simple physical interpretation that the work of external forces uh, is spent to the variation of the kinetic energy of the fluid uh, up to intensification uh, due to the boundary conditions because uh, the, moving, the moving wall also produces a work. And uh, this is uh, true up to the energy of viscous dissipation and some uh, small dissipative uh, term. And uh, for instance, for the Navier-Stokes equation, uh, the stability estimate for the finite element solution looks like this. Th there are two cases when uh, the velocity of, um, of the wall is uh, uh, small compared to the viscosity uh, coefficient uh, or uh, vice versa. Uh, actually, all norms are the same, but the, co the constant here uh, different. Here it is uh, 1 in front of all this right-hand side, and here it is some ex exponent, but this exponent is finite because the integration uh, time t, uh, capital T, is finite. But this estimate uh, relies, on, relies on restriction on uh, time step. This uh, C2 constant uh, rela is related only to the geometry of the domain and uh, uh, to the velocity of uh, of the walls, but not to the mesh size. Okay, so let us uh, switch to the movie, and I, this is just illustration uh, how this uh, transformation psi is given in practice. So uh, this is uh, the the computed tomography sequence of data which are given by our colleagues from Sechenov University, and uh, we are going to simulate the flow in the left ventricle of, the patient, of a patient. First of all, we have to uh, provide uh, segmentation of medical image to provide this uh, voxel representation at each time step of, of the left ventricle. Then we generate in this uh, dynamic uh, subdomain, red subdomain, the mesh, strahedral mesh, and it looks like this. Um, uh, uh, the mesh is composed of tetrahedra. The number of cells here is something like, to remember, maybe 50,000, something like that. And then on this moving mesh, uh, we can compute uh, the Navier-Stokes equations in the paradigm which I showed before, and to compute all velocities, pressures, all post-processing values like Q criterion and so on. Uh, so thank you very much. Let's switch back to the presentation. Uh, now, um, now we switch to the second problem, fluid structure interaction problem. Um, here we add the walls. They are, these are gray subdomains here. Again, we have fluid subdomain, we have uh, solid subdomain, elastic solid, 
and the transformation maps uh, reference uh, unsteady uh, domain, subdomains to physical subdomains. And uh, we have velocity and uh, displacement both in um, uh, fluid subdomain and solid sub structure subdomain. Structure subdomain. Um, in this case, we do not know the transformation. We have to compute it. Thus, the displacement is not known a priori, and we have to compute it both in uh, the structure, elastic structure, and in the fluid. Uh, we have two Cauchy stress extensors, sigma F and sigma S, fluid and structure respectively. We have two pressures. If uh, the structure is incompressible, we add pressure in structure. And we again assume that uh, fluid is incompressible. Um, so equations, um, uh, user-independent equations in the reference domain are uh, the dynamic equation for fluid. This is just Navier-Stokes equations, which I already showed before. And uh, the dynamic equation for the elastic structure, which is just uh, acceleration of a particle is equal to the force, elastic force, locally. Um, also, we have kinematic equation in the structure because it is el elastic material. Uh, displacement, derivative for displacement is related, is just equal to, to the velocity. In fluid domain, we do not have such, um, such an equation because uh, uh, fluid uh, doesn't have physical uh, displacements. Uh, fluid incompressibility is the same as in case of incompressible Navier-Stokes equations, and constitutive relation for the fluid stress tensor is also the same. And also we have to add uh, equations which are user-dependent uh, to the system, and these are uh, the constitutive relation for the solid stress tensor, for the structure of stress uh, tensor. This is uh, f dependence, functional dependence of the Cauchy stress on some parameters. And uh, it depends on the problem uh, uh, and on the known data, uh, which, how to choose this uh, dependence. This may be linear elasticity equation. This may be, uh, this may be nonlinear uh, models, uh, different nonlinear models, near Hookian, Sanvin uh, 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 and, uh, and so on. And one more equation we have to add. We have to add an uh, equation for artificial displacements in, uh, in fluids. Why do we need this artificial equation? Because we need these displacements, because these displacements U in fluids, they define the transformation. In order to define the transformation, Xi, we have to define U. Therefore, we have to add these artificial equations for artificial displacements. And this is the most tricky uh, step in all the setting because uh, physics does not give us uh, tools how to define this equation. For instance, we can take vector Laplacian to extend displacements from the walls to displacements to the fluid. Or we can use um, kind of um, elastic equation, elasticity equations in fluid uh, to extend physically uh, meaningful displacements in the wall to displacements in the fluid. And for different applications, the choice of these artificial equations for displacements in fluids is, uh, is difficult because a wrong choice can produce a tangling of the computational mesh. If the mesh is tangled, you cannot automating after the transformation. Then you cannot proceed with computation. And I will not stop on uh, dwell on uh, boundary conditions and initial conditions for the system. I just uh, mentioned here that uh, on the interface between fluid and structure, we impose uh, physical uh, physical interface conditions which are just. Uh, um, um, 
matching of uh, the normal uh, stresses from fluid and from structure. Uh, again, we write these equations uh, in integral formulation, um, replace uh, uh, Sobolev and two spaces for uh, velocity uh, displacement and pressure uh, by its uh, finite element subspaces, which are again Taylor Hood, pair of finite element subspace, um, apply methods of line because we have uh, uh, our equations in a steady domain, so simple uh, finite differences in time, accelerations, and all other terms in dynamic equations and in compressibility equations are linearized by extrapolation of uh, uh, factors uh, which make it nonlinear in time. For instance, uh, here again in the inertia term, we take uh, the velocities taken from the previous time step uh, extrapolation. For the elastic term, uh, for the elastic term, I will I will comment it uh, on the next slide. But anyway, uh, each term here contains only one k plus one unknown. So this is a linear system of equation. Uh, about uh, some comments about uh, about elasticity term. Uh, the framework which we suggest uh, is applicable to practically arbitrary uh, nonlinear model of elasticity. Uh, the only uh, difference uh, between the models is how you linearize uh, these or that nonlinear models. For instance, in case of San Vinan Kirchhoff uh, model, uh, which uh, assumes a uh, large uh, uh, nonlinear geometrical nonlinearity, uh, this uh, uh, linearization and extrapolation looks like this tilde means uh, extrapolation from previous time step. Um, uh, for Blatt's core model, uh, the, this term uh, is just replaced uh, to some Milan Kirchhoff. And in case of Nyahukian material, uh, S uh, form is trivial, and that's why we can linearize. Uh, uh, this factor f here instead of s, and so on. So you just linearize uh, depending on the view of nonlinearity. And this scheme uh, provides strong coupling of on interface. This is very important physically. It means that velocities are just continuous through the interface, and uh, pressures uh, and stresses are also continuous. It is same implicit in the sense that it produces one linear system per time step. Maybe first or second order in time because we apply method of lines and we can, for time differentiation, we can use first or second order to find the differences well. And we can prove that it is unconditionally stable in the sense of stability estimate for the numerical solution without restriction to CFL, to the size of the mesh size, uh, to the size of mesh step. And uh, again, assumptions are that uh, uh, we can prove it for San Vinan Kirchhoff for nonlinear models, but uh, experiments show that it works for any uh, tested nonlinear models of structure. And again, time step should not be very large. <coughs> and the stability estimate looks like this: that the energy, kinetic energy of of the of the of the structure. Uh, plus elastic energy, discrete elastic energy of the structure for some in Kirchhoff case, uh, plus uh, kinetic energy of uh, the fluid uh, at uh, time step n, plus some dissipative terms. They are bounded by the initial uh, kinetic energies and discrete elastic energy of the structure. So this is classical stability estimate for finite energy solution. And uh, example, example of of this scheme. So we consider a benchmark which was suggested 20 years ago. Um, uh, this is a tube with um, flexible walls, and uh, uh, this tube uh, mimics uh, artery of a human. Uh, 
it is uh, five centimeters length, has length five centimeters, diameter one centimeter, and uh, the uh, thickness of the wall is one millimeter. And on the left, or, or on the right, uh, on the output boundary, one imposes um, do nothing boundary conditions, uh, free, free, free outflow. On uh, on the inlet, one imposes um, the stepwise pressure. For the first th three milliseconds, uh, the pressure is very large here, like I don't remember about about 1,000 pascals, and then uh, uh, it goes to zero very quickly. So it's a step in pressure on the inlet. And this uh, stepwise pressure produces uh, pressure and a pulse wave along this, along this tube. And uh, these are the snapshots of the solution in different time moments. Actually, we exaggerate um, in large uh, displacements um, in radio, in radio uh, direction by factor 10, just to see that uh, the pressure, uh, the, uh, the pulse wave heat exists. And uh, we have all data about this three-dimensional uh, uh, three-dimensional problem. So pressures, velocities, we can post-process everything, just everything. And um, uh, again, uh, we tested this benchmark on a sequence of uh, tetrahedral meshes. The coarsest grid contains uh, 20,000 uh, cells, uh, 13,000 in fluid, and uh, 6,000 in, uh, in, in the structure, in the wall. And the finest one uh, had uh, in total uh, uh, nine, uh, around 90,000 uh, cells uh, in fl the fluid and around 40,000 uh, 40, cells uh, in the structure, which means 130,000 eh? cells. So the next uh, plot shows. Uh, so in here, this is time. Here, these are displacements. These are, these are uh, the axial displacement of a point, fixed point of the wall, and this is the radial displacement of the fixed point of the wall. And this fixed point is just the middle, just here. It's just here. How it moves in time. And we see here actually not one plot, but three plots. Uh, red, green, and blue. And each color corresponds to its grid. And we see that the computation of the coarse grid, which is, I remember well, the blue one, just almost coincides with the computation on the fine grid. So already on the 20,000 cells, we have convergence, mesh convergence. We don't need to refine mesh further. We have good solution. And another interesting uh, remark about these um, uh, displacements is that the radial displacement here is only uh, twice larger than the maximum uh, axial displacement of this point. In many models, uh, uh, in many, many models uh, which uh, start from fluid structure interaction and then uh, use a simpler model reduction, uh, uh, it is assumed that we can neglect axial, axial displacement of the points of the wall. But this is not true in this case. Axial displacements are as large as radial displacements. Okay, and now for the final, I have 10 minutes. Yes, I think 10 minutes or something like that. Uh -huh. I will uh, briefly go to the third uh, problem. Uh, this is our li latest result. Uh, this is fluid porous structure interaction problem. Uh, so uh, the same setting, the same prerequisite, but we 
assume now that uh, the wall may be permeable. It has porosity and it has uh, permeability tensor K. So, uh, of course, it is flexible, but it, it, it can take and allow fluid to move through it. Um, we have all oh, the same, just uh, for dynamics, uh, it is important to, uh, to introduce a so-called mixture, uh, uh, density of the mixture uh, of fluid and uh, structure in, in the wall. And this uh, density depends on the porosity, of course. And also, it is important to introduce so-called filtration flux, which is the difference uh, between uh, the velocity of fluid, physical velocity of fluid in the structure, and the velocity of the structure itself. And so it is difference V, velocity of fluid, minus velocity of structure, and it should be multiplied by porosity. And the equations uh, are more difficult. This is so-called BO model. Uh, we have two equations in uh, in um, in the structure, not only dynamic elastic equation, but also uh, a kind of Darcy type equation. Uh, they are uh, interactive with each other. And again, we have these extra terms J and F here because we write these equations in a steady reference domain. This is the standard now, yes, uh, momentum equation. In addition, uh, and instead of in compress, in, so in, of course, in uh, free flow uh, domain, omega f we impose incompressibility of fluid, but in um, in the structure domain, uh, in, we impose uh, a restriction uh, of the divergence um, of uh, the fluid uh, of the fluid velocity of fluid by the uh, compressibility mo modulus as zero and change of Darcy pressure because additionally to uh, elastic stress we consider poor elastic stress which is just uh, uh, sum of the elastic stress and uh, the Darcy pressure. Now the same uh, we have kinematic equation uh, in uh, in uh, in the structure we have uh, constitutive relation for the fluid we have constitutive relation which has to be chosen for 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 the elastic structure and we have uh, different several interface conditions uh, I have no time to to dwell on them uh, uh, but uh, this is basically. Um, Conditions on the stresses, uh, uh, conditions on continuity of velocity, and uh, the condition on the so-called uh, slip uh, fluid slip rate on the interface. Here, the so-called the Beavers Joseph Sussman condition, which uh, relates this uh, uh, slip uh, fluid slip rate on the interface with uh, the tangential component of the normal stresses. Again, this is a standard physical thing. Uh, and we apply the same tricks as I showed before, integral formulation, uh, some additional tricks, and get a uh, uh, semi-implicit uh, scheme, uh, which provides strong coupling on the interface, which is, uh, has, requires only a solution of one linear system for time step, uh, which may be first or second order in time and which is proven uh, that it is, uh, has a stability estimate for the finite element solution without CFA restriction. Uh, and this is how this stability estimate is our recent result uh, show, looks like. These are kinetic energies of Darcy. I am finished. I see. Okay, I'm finishing. So this is kinetic energy for... Uh, uh, for uh, For elastic structure, this is kinetic energy for the Darcy flow. This is kinetic energy for the free fluid flow. 
and this is the free energy which is composed of uh, the discrete elastic energy and uh, of the norm of the Darcy pressure. These are dissipative, uh, model dissipative term, terms and everything is bounded by the initial kinetic energies and free energy at the initial time step. So this is what we managed to prove. Okay. Uh, why it doesn't work? Huh? And the computation uh, of uh, just illustration for the, for the scheme, we took uh, two choices for permeability of the wall. One, one case is uh, corresponds to physiological data for for artery wall. And another, uh, the second case, when we increase uh, the permeability by 10 millions. Why? Because uh, if we use physiological uh, coefficients uh, of permeability, uh, then we have very small uh, Darcy fluxes. And uh, uh, the pictures are not very picturesque. That's why we considered uh, the second choice, and this are the, the Darcy flow in the wall. And it is interesting that uh, uh, with the pulse wave, uh, the Darcy uh, fluxes not always uh, goes outside um, from, uh, from, from the free flow. Sometimes it goes uh, inside. Um, we can uh, run physiological flow as well. And we can compute uh, uh, displacements of these uh, reference points uh, in the middle of the tube and uh, consider, compare these displacements and profiles of the walls for different types of permeability, including completely impermeable case. These are the profiles of the wall during this uh, pulse wave propagation for different type of permeabilities. And um, so we have instrument for estimation of uh, uh, filtration flux in the wall of the vessel. Why it is important? Because all med med medical uh, you, 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 you eat, right? And then it goes to your blood. And then the blood uh, transports the medicine to, 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 to your organs, right? And it goes through the walls of the vessels. And if you know the filtration velocity, uh, then you know uh, you can estimate the concentration uh, in the wall or outside. And it is important, for instance, for curing aterosclerosis because this is trouble or in the wall. Um, okay, so at the end, uh, we. Uh, uh, developed accurate numerical models which pro provide all three-dimensional fields, I mean pressure, velocity, displacements. It is unconditionally stable in the sense which I mentioned. It requires only one linear system per time step. It can deal with different uh, non-linear elasticity models and it can deal with large time steps. In simulations we need about 100 or 1,000 time steps at all. But uh, I must mention that all these uh, simulations are computationally expensive, as I already mentioned in the initial uh, slide. Uh, also, uh, the problem of uh, the structure uh, is uh, that you don't know exactly the model, the model nonlinearity of, 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 of your structure. And again, the boundary conditions on your 3D domain are always speculative. You have to think how to map them to physiology. That's it. Thank you very much. And the details are here in this book. Thank you.
Yes, uh, of course. And uh, the first uh, fluid structure interaction models uh, in the world, I mean, the first models were based on the shell reduction, of course. But uh, we want to have the tool which is not, uh, which does not, uh, which has the maximum generality, let's say. We have a question from the internet. Okay. <laughs> Professor Yeager, you are welcome. Yes, uh, yes uh, uh, purely for this lecture. lecture. I am especially, am especially interested in the last part because we are looking at uh, the situation of physiological situation, especially of inflammation, and therefore the transport to the uh, endothelial layer is highly important from the blood vessels in inside the vessel walls, for instance, or in the tissue. But our main problem is the boundary conditions. You, uh, 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 one are the boundary conditions to suppose for the transition in the uh, el poor elastic, which is really not at the mo moment mainly phenomenological, and there is a lot of open problems in multi scale. Have you looked in this direction first? And we also did ca computations with chemical reactions and transport of immune cells. But then the effects which one has there were changing, for instance, a pore elastic structure, are long time effects. The question is here also a numerical problem because we have uh, some of the time scales of the process are very small and they are long. And we have really troubles in numerical schemes to discover these long time effects, which we also have in arterial sclerosis. Uh, I think uh, the field of uh, what you mentioned in the last uh, part is very important for uh, and very not very much investigated enough. And I, I really appreciate it that you post the last point so important on the BO interaction with poroelastic media. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, for the second uh, question, uh, uh, I suggest uh, to use uh, uh, the estimation for filtration flux uh, in another long-term model. Uh, if we have atherosclerosis plug, uh, atherosclerotic plug, or healthy vessel, we can estimate for the same uh, conditions uh, the filtration flux, and uh, they are different, of course, they will be different, uh, and uh, we shall take uh, this uh, uh, these uh, two different fluxes uh, in your long-term uh, model of development of atherosclerosis. As for the first uh, question, uh, I didn't understand uh, well. You are talking about boundary conditions at the yeah. interface, or you are talking about boundary conditions on the cut of the vessel? No, I'm not talking about the cut of vessel. It's another problem. But the problem is the coupling conditions between the porous, uh, 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 porous, elastoporous media and the uh, the outside. And uh, you know, uh, there we we have been studying this a lot for fixed uh, for stiff material, not poroelastic material, together with anthromycilage. And it's still open to justify some of the, for instance, uh, Beaver Joseph is not justified for this. this uh, it's a phenomenological assumption, but we do not know, especially if we are interested in how it changes, because due to the changes in, in the wall. Well, we did not address this issue. We can uh, impose different type of boundary conditions on the outer space, I mean, on the, on the outer boundary, but uh, we did not analyze the difference. But there is really a gap which we have to do mathematically because it's very important for the whole evolution, especially as you said, if it changes, the porosity changes during the process. 
в эфир Запорожский. In these uh, simulations. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Professor Jäger, I suggest we shall discuss it later. Yes, by... great. I'm very happy to do this with you. I, I like your uh, research high, estimated very highly, and you can be of help for us. Okay, thank you.
Конечно, конечно. Okay. So let us uh, proceed to the next session, and uh, the first speaker of uh, of this session is uh, Viktor uh, Valentinovich Vlasov. The title is here: Spectral Analysis of Alterian Integral Differential Equations and Associated Semigroups of Operators. Please. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, First of all, I would like to say many thanks for the organizers uh, for the opportunity to have a lecture on this fine conference. So, you see the topic of my uh, lecture is spectral analysis of Volterra integral differential equations and uh, associated semi-groups of operators. So, a plan of my plan of my talk. First of all, several examples of, I can give several examples of Volterra integral differential equations. Then uh, a statement of the problem in Hewlett space, including correct solubility. Then the most interesting part, spectral analysis of operator function. Then we'll discuss special case, so-called uh, Gurtin-Pipkin equation. And uh, second part of my talk, it, it will be a semi-group approach. It, it will be new results, joint results by my co-author, Nadezhda Rovutian. So let's begin the example. One of the simplest example is so-called Gurtin-Pipkin integral differential equations. Equation, here you see wave equation disturbed by Volterra uh, integral operator of convolution type. Uh, Gurtin and Pipkin uh, were not mathematicians, uh, they are well-known specialists in uh, physics, and uh, they uh, derived with this equation in comparison, uh, not in comparison, you see, we know Poisson formula for um, heat equation, but due to this formula, uh, a velocity of heat transfer is infinite. So they suggest such model. Another more complicated model uh, appears in the theory of viscoelasticity. Here you see this equation, and uh, this equation was uh, may be found in monograph of Lucian Pobedra or Christensen. So let us uh, speak some words about kernels. Kernels of these equations, uh, the simplest one is the finite number of exponentials. And more interesting, first, uh, more interesting is third world model, so-called fractional exponential functions or Robotnov functions, Robotnov functions. Uh, very popular in applications. In applications. Uh, mm, all these uh, kernels may be represented in more general way due to stilt-yest integrals. For example, if we'll speak about Robotnov function, so you see, not pleasant enough expression, if you use Laplace transfer and then its inverse, you can uh, obtain such a representation of these Robotnov functions. You see. And we'll speak about it. Now, uh, the strict statement of the problems. We can live in abstract Hillwood space, 
A will be self-adjoint operator acting in this space, uh, having, uh, having a compact inverse. B will, will be symmetric operator, not so strong than A. Uh, so uh, the following estimate, the following estimate is uh, very good, we'll see. And the uh, main equation is the following equation. One, with initial conditions, two. Uh, if we we'll speak about kernels, kernels is represented by CPS integrals. And the very important condition four is satisfied. I must say that uh, this condition uh, four uh, play a very important role in our constructions. If mm, uh, condition four isn't satisfied, uh, then the problem will be un uh, unstable. Uh, and it, uh, sometime, additionally, we'll consider the uh, condition five also. Yeah. So uh, the symbol of our uh, integral differential equation is an operator function six of such a form. And here you see K capital and K with a cap is the plus transform, the plus transform of, the, of our kernels. Then um, usual definition uh, in, operator, in the theory of operator pencils, in spectral theory, uh, we call uh, the resident set of operator function such that, that uh, L minus one exists and bounded. And if we'll consider uh, whole complex plane and throughout this uh, resolute set, we have a spectra of operator function. And the main problem for us will be to um, describe the spectra of our operator function. But before it, before it, I'll formulate several results about solvability of our uh, integral differential equation or of the problem. Well, due to uh, a <clears throat> very well-known fact from monograph of Carter, operator A0, that is A plus B, will be a positive self-adjoint operator. Uh, we construct the following Sobolev spaces, but not we, but Leon Smadzenis. Uh, this is a material from monograph of Leon Smadzenis, chapter one. Uh, and we'll speak about solubility in these uh, Sobolev spaces of vector value functions. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, strong solution. We say that uh, function, vector function A2 is uh, strong solution if it belongs to this Sobolev space W22. Uh, and satisfy equation almost everywhere on the positive semi-axis. Also, let us convert the domain A0 beta uh, to the space H beta, introducing uh, the norm equivalent to graph norm of operator L. And so, first result is the result about uh, correct solvability of our problem and existence of strong solution. Let us suppose that not uh, function five, but first derivative belongs to the space L2, uh, then we have the following uh, estimate, sorry, estimate eight. Uh, uh, and here uh, you see several uh, references. Uh, of course, um, we have many time, 45 minutes, but it's impossible to speak about um, the proofs, real proofs. But uh, the main uh, idea of it is using, um, first of all, uh, uh, the, result, uh, the, the results uh, concerning the behavior of operator function L 
minus one in rough, uh, in, in right plane, right half plane, uh, uh, and see and walk in hardly spaces. Uh, well, uh, some similar features is a well-known uh, article of Naganovich and Vishik, well-known article, elliptic problems with parameter and parabolic problems. And I must say that if you speak about the results about solvability, there are a great number of results in this field obtained by Italians and also uh, mathematicians from Crimea, I do mention uh, Kapachevsky, Nikolai Dmitrievich Kapachevsky, Zakora and Semkin and so on and so forth. Uh, here you, you see uh, a, a result definition of weak or generalized uh, solution of this problem. So um, uh, the following equality nine have to be satisfied and we uh, say that this uh, function A2 is uh, generalized or weak solution. And here you see the result about uh, weak solvability. That is, uh, the restrictions not, are not so severe in comparison with the previous theorem number one. Here you see function f of t belongs to the space L2. Then we have the unique weak solution and uh, the estimate uh, 10 is satisfied. So uh, most more interesting for me and uh, maybe for somebody, but the spectral analysis of operator function. Uh, first of all, uh, if the condition 4 is satisfied, I, I, I have told that it, it is important solution, then the spectral operator function lies in open semi-plate semi-plane. Uh, so situation is stable here. Uh, more uh, complicated theorem, theorem 4. Suppose that condition 4 holds, then unreal part of spectral operator function is symmetric concern real axis uh, and consists of eigenvalues of finite algebraic multiplicity. Uh, Moreover, moreover, these eigenvalues are isolated and have no accumulation points. And uh, theorem five about localization of spec. Uh, in some way, it looks like so-called Keldish localization, well known in the theory of operator pencils. That is uh, eigenvalues, complex eigenvalues, lie in the domain such domain, gamma epsilon, sorry. Oh, ah, sorry, sorry, it lies except finite number, it lies in the angles, such angles, you see. Uh, so let us continue to speak about uh, localization. Let us suppose mm, that mm, uh, supports of measures MQ, uh, belongs to the segment. Then uh, we have the following estimate of the operator function L minus 1 in complex plane. Moreover, if we speak uh, about uh, more delicate uh, information, if condition 4 holds and uh, measures uh, below measures supports of measures belongs to uh, this segment uh, non-real uh, part of spectra is lying in vertical in vertical strip here it's a complex plane and you see here you see have the following strip and here you see uh, eigenvalues of finite multiplicity, minus alpha 1 and alpha. I must say that if kernels k equals to 0, we have pure wave equation. 
and spectra is lying on the imaginary axis. Then we uh, consider kernels and situation became more stable from imaginary axis spectra turns to right part and uh, I will formulate this result. Uh, the solution will uh, decay in exponentially. Then, and here you see uh, the bounds, bounds of this strip well, alpha 1 and alpha 2, in terms of kernels, first of all, and operators A and B. Uh, it's more brute estimates. For, for Here you see the information about real part of the spectra. I'll slightly omit this result. I must say that a real part is lying on the segment, on the segment, but this segment is lying uh, in uh, pure open semiplane, not at the origin. And it is a rather important fact, and we'll use it. So, this is, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, let us consider more simple situation, so-called Gurtin-Pipkin equation. It is a situation when operator B is equal to zero. Operator B is equal to zero. Uh, heat equations with memory. Uh, for the convenience, we introduce not operator A, but operator A squared here. It's in some way more convenient for us. Uh, some conditions on measure. Uh, Sobolev space constructed by operator A. So usual for us now definitions, strong solution and generalized or weak solutions of this equation. And uh, here you see the results. Uh, but I must say that if condition uh, 19, 19 is uh, satisfied, I'm sorry, oh, I'm deeply sorry. Please help me. <laughs> what? If condition 19 is satisfied, that is uh, the condition uh, when our uh, kernel uh, is smooth one, it's 19 condition. Then we have take initial functions from the space H2 and H1. If not, then we have uh, take more smooth initial data, phi 0 and phi 1 from the space uh, H3 and H2. And here uh, see the results. Now, operator function. In this situation, when operator B is equal to 0, the situation is much more easy because of uh, there exists an anatomical uh, basis in the space H, and we can, in some way, deliver our operator function to scalar functions, Ln here, you see. And uh, in this situation, it is possible to formulate the result about localization of the spectra, of non-real spectra. The situation will be followed. It's not a strip, it's only line. And asymptotically, asymptotically non-real eigenvalues tend to these, to, to these vertical line values. It's not working. Now, more interesting and more complicated case when uh, instead of exponentials, we consider so-called Rabotna functions. Uh, uh, Laplace transform of this Rabotna function is look like this well, one function. And localization of spectra 
is uh, seriously different. You see, it's formula 26, and uh, this is a picture. It's not a parabolic situation, uh, but real parts of eigenvalues tends to minus infinity. You see, in previous situation, spectra uh, was parallel to imaginary axis. When we consider more strong well, kernels, Rabotna functions, real paths tends to minus infinity, but it's not parabolic situation because of we have no here analytic semigroup. Well, it will be a differential semigroup, but not analytic one. And now uh, new results about so-called semigroup approach. Semigroup approach. Uh, first of all, I must say that it's not only my results, but main part of them uh, belongs to Nadezhda Rogutian, semi-group approach. Uh, here you see four monographs. Uh, the most interesting may be second one, I mean, Dola, Fabrizio, and Golden. It's uh, devoted to um, study integral differential equations uh, about what I was speaking. So, um, Similar conditions and similar integral differential equations, but approach will be seriously different. Because of we'll try to rewrite this problem 27 and 28 like an ordinary differential equation uh, in orthogonal sum of some hill of space. You see kernels represented by still PS integral. Uh, it's an analog of the condition four, uh, measures uh, quite small. Let us introduce uh, an operator A0. It's not previous A0, but A0 constructed by the following form. And due to our assumptions, um, this operator A0 will be uh, self enjoyed operator. Unit operator. Moreover, operators Q1 and Q2 uh, and A0 minus 1 are bounded in A's. It's, it's the corollary of some results from Celine Crane. Let us introduce the following functions C, K, T, tau, <laughs> and function phi. Uh, we now consider not strong and not generalized solutions, but classical solutions. Uh, that is smooth function satisfies the equation for every t. Uh, formally, problem mm, 27 and 28 may be rewrite like system. Uh, you see this system, not pleasant enough. And but, but plays quite important role. So let us introduce uh, the space, uh, a, such spaces, you'll see, uh, a semi-group uh, L capital K, acting in following form, and uh, generator of this semi-group will be Operator of multiplying uh, on tau. Uh, also, let us introduce operator B capital K and B can you get operator B star K in the following way, and you see here it's really conjugate operators. Let us introduce uh, a space. Uh, that is sum of these Hilbert spaces with uh, quite natural norm, Hilbert norm, and an operator. Uh, the domain of operator is as follows, and uh, if we we'll speak about action of this operator, uh, is you see such formula. Not pleasant enough, but if we will write in metric matrix way, it's more pleasant picture, you see. 
Uh, and the main information about operator A is uh, the second matrix here, you see. Because of first and third are quite easy constructed. So our problem, our problem may be rewrite it like in monograph of Selim Crane uh, as an ordinary differential problem. Uh, 36. We give a quite natural definition of the solution of this problem. You see. Oh, select. And now the results about semi-group, at least or at last. First of all, uh, operator A is a well, fine operator. It's maximal dissipative operator. Moreover, uh, the following estimate is true, well, you see. Corollary of the theorem 13 will be 14 theorem. Uh, it's a decay of energy of the system. And I must say that uh, this function C1 and C2 depends only on, on, only on, on kernels of integral operators in our equation. It, in some way, it's a characterization of the decay of inner energy of our system. Now, let us uh, consider non-homogeneous equation, of course. Uh, quite uh, natural assumptions here on function f of t, uh, like in book of Selim Crane, well, you see. And let us introduce such functions, M capital K, dependence on our measures. Uh, the following uh, theorem 15 uh, is true here, but uh, we are interested in the results about energy of our system described by our integral differential equations, and it's a calorie. We, You see, you have an estimate of energy of our system in terms by initial data and right part of our system. Yeah. Initial function and right part. Depending on kernels, kernels of course. Uh, two examples, uh, quite uh, not trivial, but quite simple example when kernels are sums of decaying exponentials. Uh, here we can write our system in the following way, and I must say that uh, mathematicians from Crimea, first of all, Nikolai Dmitrievich Kapachevsky, and uh, his postgrad student, but now he is a doctor of sciences, Dmitry Zakora, use uh, analogous constructions. And in this situation, we have the following estimate of our energy. It's, it, this result is quite similar. But uh, if we speak another about uh, the second example, uh, here you see kernels are so-called Robotnov functions. This situation was not considered by uh, Kapachevsky and Zakora. In some way, it's a more complicated situation. But it is possible also in this uh, way uh, to obtain the following estimate of the energy in terms of Robotnov functions you see here, you see. Well, and I have maybe 10 minutes. Now, the most interesting part of our talk, spectral analysis of operator A capital. Uh, natural assumptions, we'll repeat this assumption once more. Here you see an operator function L capital. It's a symbol of our equation. Operation uh, function 4T with uh, a Laplace transform of 
our kernels. Uh, usual natural definitions. And now matrix uh, representation of operator A capital minus lambda identity operator, lambda I. It may be represented in the following way. The following way. In turn, uh, using uh, Factorization of Schur Frabenius. It's quite a popular moment in spectral theory. Our operational function L, uh, our operator L of lambda uh, can be representative on such a form. And here you see first operator, first operator, and third operator are good bounded operators. Uh, you have a di uh, diagonal forms, and the main information uh, in second term, in second operator, here you see. And the main part of this operator is operator function M lambda. So M lambda uh, have the following representation. It may be it connected with a symbol of our operator in such a way. And this operator L0 minus one and a half, uh, good enough operators, this form of operators, you see. And um, uh, the corollary of our result uh, that if this condition, uh, this condition 39 is satisfied, uh, then non-real spectra of operator A and operator functions are symmetric uh, with respect and coincides each other. And we speak about uh, operator function L and its localization spectra. So if we speak of uh, non-real spectra of operator A, it's a similar. Uh, now, usual construction in operator, in theory of operator functions and operators, let us uh, construct uh, a RIS projector. Uh, it's well known, well seen, well in this series, such a RIS projector, and it is possible to choose quanta, quanta gamma in such a way that it lies in open in open left semiplane well. So quanta gamma surround well the spectra of operator A. And due to this we can construct this project. This operator. And deliver oh I'm sorry. And and uh, due to this risk projector we can construct two spaces, H capital one and H capital two in the following way. And now you see the theorem of completeness, of completeness. Let us suppose that uh, such in condition 45 is satisfied. Then, then if we'll speak about the system of root vectors of operator A corresponding to eigenvalues which is lying in the vertical strip, uh, this uh, system will be complete in the space H2. So condition uh, 45 is quite natural conditions in the facts, in the theory uh, of completeness, uh, you see, that is S number numbers uh, of operator A0 uh, looks like uh, have a polynomial behavior. Now, more strong and more deep result, quite up to date results about uh, risk basis, of course. 
completeness is one thing, but uh, baselessness is more uh, more interesting, more deep, more delicate well, situation. So we, instead of condition 45, we have to consider condition 46. 46, it's more severe condition on multiplying function n t. Then we can uh, divide our vertical strip in such a way, diagonals, and consider subspaces of eigenvalues lying in such a domains. And uh, so we have here uh, a basisness of subspaces, of subspaces. It's, it's impossible in this situation to deliver uh, our spectra to individual eigenvalues. We have to unite in triangles, but it's also the result, of course. And uh, I have maybe, maybe five minutes. Uh, uh, then I begin. In, I begin. Oh, I'm sorry. A representation of the solutions. A representation on the base uh, of solvability, uh, description of spectra, and uh, completeness and risk basisness, it's possible to obtain the result about representation of the solution. So this statement will be like in further year. So initial uh, condition will be uh, the following for function C, C, K. Uh, so um, this theorem about uh, solvability, and now on the base of completeness, it is possible to obtain the result about the representation of the solutions of our problem. So due to the fact that our system is complete, it is possible to uh, write uh, that OT vector in, uh, like a sum of two um, terms. First of all, a finite sum uh, of eigenvalues plus plus uh, this term, which is, uh, I'm sorry, which is quite small. Due to the completeness, it is possible to represent this function. And due to this representation, we have uh, the following uh, representation of the solution. It, it is a sum of two terms, Z1 and Z2. They may, they may be write, written in such form due to risk projecting and uh, projectors. And uh, term Z2 is a finite sum of exponential solutions uh, plus, uh, plus um, function uh, is small. It's no small, it's quite small, less than epsilon. Well, the second result, and here you see uh, the estimate of the term in such representation. So um, another result, and it is, uh, I imagine, uh, we have a risk basis. So we can uh, represent the term Z02, not like a final sum, but a series. Uh, and series is uh, converge unconditionally due to the fact that we have a risk basis. The solution. And uh, this sum do not depend on order of summation. So on, on the base of this representation, we can uh, obtain that our solution that may be uh, may be represented in the following way, like sum of two terms. And Z2 
is a series of exponential solutions of our equation. And this uh, series converge, uh, converge unconditionally on the basis of this basis. And here you see uh, the estimates of uh, function Z1 and Z2, as you see, on the base. And at least or at last uh, several recent uh, publications. Uh, first of all, you see, not my, but my author, Nadezhda Rautian. First part concerned uh, Sobolev spaces and spectral analysis, our joint results and semi-group approach, maybe main part of this was obtained by Ravutian. So thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Viktor Valentinovich. Questions, please? Yes, please. So uh, when you discussed the uh, Risk basisness of uh, the subspaces corresponding to the, the rectangles. Uh, maybe you showed it, but I didn't track it. Is it possible to estimate the dimension of the corresponding uh, eigen subspace? subspace? No. no. In this uh, situation, you see quite general, and uh, we, we have more severe, much more severe well, restriction, then it will be possible. But in general situation, you have a strip divided by triangles only. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, similar examples is in the theory of so-called functional differential equations, difference differential equations of natural type. Uh, if we have uh, any severe conditions, it, it is impossible. And see, here, the situation is more general than in <laughs> functional situations. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, Viktor Valentinovich, hmm. how do uh, the assumptions differ uh, in these two approaches? Uh, the first one is the spectral analysis of the operator fence, and the second one is the semi group approach. How do the assumptions differ? Well, in some way, assumptions are quite similar. Uh, if we we'll speak about uh, uh, situation when measures have a compact support, support situation, uh, the um, conditions are quite similar. Well, in semi-group approach or in estimated operator functions, well, but there is a difference. Uh, uh, if we we'll speak about solubility in Sobolev spaces and classical solutions. Uh, first of all, I was the beginner of uh, the results of solubility in Sobolev spaces. I, I do mention that it, it is more comfortable to work with Sobolev spaces and so on. But I was, it was a mistake. Uh, if we we'll speak about classical solutions, the results is, is in some way uh, more interesting, more interesting. Uh, it depends on the kernels and so on. So um, hyperbolic case uh, is not uh, very good for Sobolev space as well in some way. If we speak about Sobolev space on T, time, uh, well, maybe I not answer uh, completely this question, but... <laughs> Okay, thank you. Other questions? Uh, I have a little question. Uh, so you mentioned uh, heat equation with memory for yes. a simple case. Yes. Uh, your uh, analysis is applicable to more general equations. Yes. For example, for example, in, if we we'll speak about vascular elasticity, it's more complicated situation. It was an example. Second example, uh, yes, uh, if we we'll speak about abstract scheme of an abstract integral differential equations, these two examples we can consider, but uh, equation, heat equation with memory, uh, surely is the simplest well situation. It, it, 
situation when operator V is equals to zero. Yes, yes. And uh, we can deliver our space in orthogonal sum due to eigenvalues operator A, divide our problem to imagine some of more simplest problem and so on and so forth. If we have two operators, not commutative operators, it's much more different situation. Much more difficult. Not different, but <laughs> difficult. Okay, thank you very much. So, if there are no more questions, let's thank Viktor Valentinovich again. And we have uh, the next talk in 12.55. Thank you. Спасибо большое. So, organizers, do you hear me? Hello? Добрый день. Здравствуйте. Меня слышно? Алло. Где-то через пять минут отклад. Председатель стоит Юрий Викторович Василевский. Ну, на связи, пожалуйста. В общем, меня... Но меня слышно? Да-да-да, все хорошо. А, хорошо, спасибо. Да, экран-то видно? Да, видно.
Еще, наверное, надо проверить, переключаются ли слайды. Ну да, просто сейчас мы вот видим еще окно Teams вашего. Ну да, ну просто вот переключаются. Да, все великолепно. А, все, спасибо. Okay. Uh, our next talk is online, uh, given by Anatoly Sergeyevich Neistat. Uh, the title of the talk is Destruction of Adiabatic Invariants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, many thanks. <coughs> I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. And uh, I am going to present a review on mechanism of destruction of adiabatic invariance <coughs> with examples from uh, theory of motion of charged particles. And uh, it is, uh, this review is based on joint work with uh, Anton Artemiev, Vladislav Sidorenko, Carlos Simo, Dmitry Trishov, Dmitry Turaev, Dmitry Weinstein, Alexey Vasilyev, and uh, Lev Zelenyi. And this is uh, my plan. I'm going to start with preliminaries. They will be mainly about conservation of adiabatic invariants, and then to discuss three mechanisms of uh, destruction of adiabatic invariants, passage through separatrix, passage through resonance, and the change of mode of motion of systems with uh, collisions. So, I will start with the preliminaries. So what is the adiabatic invariant? It's approximate first integral or conservation law of system with slowly varying parameters or with slow and fast motion. So uh, suppose we have uh, some system. It depends on parameters. Parameters change slowly. <coughs> Phase variables change. But there is some function of phase variables and parameters which remains approximately constant during long time intervals when parameter can change by a value of order one. And such function uh, are called adiabatic invariance. This uh, terminology was introduced by Paul Ehrenfest. 
So uh, this is the, an example. This is uh, more, probably the most simple and most classical example. This is linear oscillator with slowly varying frequency. Uh, this example was discussed by Relay, uh, Ellen Fest, Lorenz, Einstein. So this is a <coughs> linear oscillator. Q is a coordinate. Omega is frequency. And this frequency depends slowly on time. So it depends on epsilon t. And epsilon is small parameter of our problem. The Q dot is a, a velocity. So we can introduce energy of the, this pendulum. But because we have dependence on time, this energy is not conserved. But this ratio, ratio of energy to the frequency it's conserved, approximately conserved during the motion. It's adiabatic invariant. And uh, it's adiabatic invariant. <coughs> Sorry. So, and uh, what is its geometrical meaning? Uh, this is action of our pendulum uh, for frozen frequency, the phase trajectories are uh, ellipses, and the action is the area surrounded by the uh, area of this ellipse, this blue area, divided by 2 pi. So uh, when frequency change, we can represent our motion as follows. The phase point move on this ellipse, but this ellipse itself, so, uh, we have a, a slow evolution of this ellipse, but evolution is such that area around area of this ellipse remains constant. So this is a simple example. Uh, I will consider the most general case, case of slow fast Hamiltonian systems. So this function E is a Hamiltonian, and uh, there are variables of two types. Variables PQ, the differential equation for them is a uh, usual differential uh, Hamiltonian canonical systems, and uh, they change with the speed of order one, and they are called fast variables. And for variables yx, differential equation is uh, again canonical Hamiltonian system, but Hamiltonian is uh, epsilon e. So we have epsilon in front of equations, and their variables are called uh, slow variables. <coughs> And uh, a system with slow dependence on time is a particular case of this system. So uh, because the uh, slow variables change slowly, first we can, should consider uh, the system when they are frozen. And uh, this is called fast system. Simplest case is uh, when we have two degrees of freedom, one degree of freedom for fast variables and one degree of freedom for slow variables. So I assume that for frozen slow variables, we have on the face portrait, we have closed trajectories like for the pendulum. And uh, the standard recipe is uh, to describe mm, dynamics when uh, slow variables change is to average equation for the motion over fast frequency or fast phase of motion on this phase portrait. And let I will be action uh, of this system. Again, area surrounded by trajectory divided by 2 pi. And it turns out that the recipe for uh, explained motion of slow variables is very simple. We should take our Hamiltonian, express it via action and slow variables. And this is Hamiltonian for motion of slow variables. And this is called adiabatic approximation. In this approximation, action is constant, it's invariant, and for fast vari slow variables, we have a Hamiltonian system with one degree of freedom. So we can completely study dynamics in this approximation. How good is conservation of adiabatic invariant? So, uh, Actually, it, uh, the section oscillates, it's not constant, it oscillates with amplitude of order epsilon. 
but it's possible to introduce improve, improved action and it oscillate with the amplitude of order epsilon squared. And actually, it uh, uh, is possible to introduce improved action of any order, so oscillation will be of order epsilon to the n with arbitrary n, if the system is smooth enough. But uh, it's uh, the first improve, if the improvement, this improvement is uh, okay for us. So what is the time of conservation of adiabatic invariant? It's conserved on a very long time and sometimes in infinite time interval uh, under some condition. And this is famous Arnold theorem about perpetual con conservation of adiabatic invariant. It is for the system uh, with two degrees of freedom. And uh, we assume in this case that uh, in adiabatic approximation, the dynamics of slow variables, and it's described by system with one degree of freedom, is periodic. So this is the phase portrait of slow motion in adiabatic approximation. And dynamics uh, in this approximation looks like this. Phase point in phase plane is mover on closed trajectory, but this trajectory itself, it's evolving, but it's evolving periodically. So in the whole phase space, we have a motion either on torus uh, with two frequency. And uh, Arnold's theorem says that as a, uh, and the, the rather general condition, the adiabatic invariant, the action of fast system, remain constant for approximately constant for infinite time interval. So there is no destruction of adiabatic invariance at all. So our topic is destruction of adiabatic invariant. And the first mechanism is uh, uh, related to passage through a uh, separatrix. <coughs> so uh, again, we have a uh, slow fast Hamiltonian system with two degrees of freedom, and we assume that in the phase space of fast motion, there is a separatrix like this eight figure. And this uh, divides the plane into three domains outside the separatrix and two domains inside separatrix loop. But in the process of motion, the phase point would be able to cross the separatrix because it's phase portrait of the fast plane, not the fast system, not of the whole system. And this is again the question which was considered classical question was going on here and it was discussed already by Aaron Fest. So, uh, can, uh, to study this problem, it is convenient to uh, discuss everything on the energy level because we have a Hamiltonian system. There is a, a level of the Hamiltonian is conserve for uh, and we can construct phase plane of the slow motion separately in each such domain. Uh, we pick up uh, point value of slow variables x, y, and we consider uh, what is the trajectory of a system uh, for these values of slow variables on which we have a uh, prescribe value of Hamiltonian H. So uh, it could be outside separatrix and we have uh, some piece of the phase plane or we have two pieces corresponding to trajectories inside the separatrix. But there is special value of slow variables when uh, our trajectory with given energy H is the separatrix, and therefore we have three um, <coughs> phase uh, spaces, three phase planes constructed separately for each domain, and we should glue them on some curve. So the phase plane play this, this, the phase space of slow variables is now not a smooth manifold, but such in a singular manifold, which is a glued of three pieces along some line. And uh, this line is called uncertainty curve. This terminology was uh, introduced by American astronomer Jack Wisdom 
uh, when he studied the uh, problem of origin of Kirkwood gaps in the belt of asteroids. So how the, the dynamics looks like? Uh, in adiabatic approximation action, I, which is now a function of slow variables and energy, remains constant. And this describes some evolution of phase trajectory of fast system. And in the process of evolution, we can arrive to this uh, uncertainty curve. And uh, for fast planes, this means that our trajectories, uh, trajectory when we started outside separatrix, it uh, in the process of evolution arrives to the separatrix. And after that, it's possible to have two continuation into this domain or into this domain. And uh, on this gluid phase space, this means that we have uh, two possible continuation of our motion. And to each such continuation, one can prescribe certain probability. So what's going on with adiabatic invariant here? It is not concerned. It was uh, because of purely geometric reason, and it was noticed by Ehrenfest. Indeed, uh, when we are close to separatrix outside uh, the separatrix, we have one area, and we, uh, when we are inside separatrix, we have other areas. So because of purely geometrical reasons, there is jump of area, and therefore jump of adiabatic invariant. So uh, it looks as follows. In outer domain, we have some constant value of adiabatic invariant. But when we jump to inner domains, we have uh, one value in one domain and other value of other domain. So we can call it geometrical jump of a diabetic invariant. But in addition to this, there is a dynamical jump, which depends on value of small, small parameter. So uh, ad improved adiabatic invariant oscillates near value of a adiabatic invariant in uh, outer domain, then we have geometrical jump, and then we have again oscillations, but they are not exactly uh, near the <coughs> predicted geometrical value. And in general, this jump is of order epsilon, logarithm epsilon, and uh, it is uh, very sensitive to initial conditions. So if we change initial condition by epsilon, the relative value of jump will be of order of jump itself. So it's reasonable to consider the jump as a random value. Asymptotic formula for this jump was first uh, obtained by Alexander Vladimirovich Timofeev, physicist from Kurchatov Institute. And then they were obtained by general formula, by Kariak, uh, Scan, Tennyson, and uh, myself. So uh, the uh, effect of this uh, dynamical jump is uh, most visible when we have a symmetry. Uh, when these two separatrix loops are symmetric, they have the same areas. So if instead of a jump of adiabatic in, instead of action inside this domain, we, we will use double action then adiabatic invariant will be uh, uh, continuous on the separatrix. So in this case, these two lines uh, coincide, and if we multiply it here by two, we will have just uh, one line. So there is no geometrical jump, but there is a dynamical jump, and it plays important role. I am going to uh, illustrate this on problem of motion of charged particle in parabolic motion of uh, magnetic magnetotail tail of the Earth. So uh, this is uh, our planet, and these are magnetic field lines, and this is Sun. So the most standard situation is uh, close to uh, the planet, uh, then uh, the, and we consider motion of charged particle. So uh, the particle uh, moves uh, along the circle, but this or more circle, but this circle moves along the magnetic field line. This motion is described by uh, guiding center theory. This is very classical. So the motion is back and forth 
on this line. So magnetic fields of this of uh, the Earth, this this <coughs> giant uh, magnetic trap for particle. But we are considered in, uh, interested in other case. Uh, we, from the opposite, from the sun uh, side of magnetic field, the magnetic field are very elongated because magnetic field is uh, uh, rather weak and the Larmor radius is very big and is comparable with the um, uh, curvature radius of magnetic field. And so the trajectory looks like this. We have uh, oscillations, Larmor motion along one branch of this parabola, part, this part of magnetic field. Then we have oscillation about equatorial plane. Then we move back and we have oscillation again either about this part of this branch of our parabola. And this is uh, described by Buchner's Zeloni quasi-abatic theory of motion as magnetic field. The standard theory which describe motion here. And in this theory, the essential role is played, uh, played by jumps of adiabatic invariant. So uh, this dynamics is uh, described by syst slow fast system with two degrees of freedom. Fast coordinates is a vertical coordinate here, and slow coordinate is a coordinate, uh, uh, horizontal coordinates uh, in equatorial plane of a magnetic field. And we have two potential wells, which corresponds to two branches of this parabola. And uh, passage through motion, th this oscillation about parab branch of parabola to oscillation with respect to equator is exactly passage through a separatrix. So uh, we can consider slow fast plane, and this is fast plane we have separatrix for some values of parameter of the form x uh, um, eight figures. So uh, these two domains correspond to oscillations outside equatorial plane, and uh, this motion is oscillation around equatorial plane, and this is the face plate plane of slow motion. So this domain. Here, each point of this domain corresponds to two trajectories, but because of symmetry, they are shown in the same plane. And uh, uh, this curve, this half circle, is an uh, uncertainty curve. And the motion here is a motion outside uh, separatrix loop. So motion looks like this. We move uh, here. Uh, inside of one of the loop, then we cross uncertainty curve. This means that we start to move outside. Then we cross uncertainty curve again. And this motion is periodic in adiabatic approximation. But actually, at this point and this point, we have dynamical jump of adiabatic invariant. And accumulation of this jump as a random values leads, uh, leads to destruction of adiabatic invariant. This is illustrated here. These are two jumps of adiabatic invariant. It's uh, it's about constant here, but here we have uh, some jump. And on a uh, slow plane, trajectory is not closed. And after a long time, uh, we have a uh, destruction of adiabatic invariant. So we have we jump from one closed trajectory to another. And uh, there is no a rigorous theory here for multiple crossing of separatrix, but estimates which are confirmed by numerics are as follows. Uh, each jumps is of order epsilon. They are random values with zero average. And uh, then diff there is diffusion and typical time of diffusion is uh, of order one over epsilon cubed. But this domain is not domain of exactly domain of chaotic motion. We can consider a Poincaré section here, say I pick up any position here and put particle, put point on a fast plane any time 
when we cross this this domain this line in uh, our slow motion and this is a uh, sorry this is how this Poincare section looks like so there are uh, smooth closed trajectories uh, these are for the case when we don't cross uh, uh, separatrix uh, here there is a chaotic domain due to crossing the separatrix but here we see some uh, like segments and to south that these segments are boundary of stability islands and uh, this was described and it turns out that um, this islands is, are very small, measure of which islands is uh, of order epsilon, but still it's not zero. It's bounded from below by value of order epsilon, and there are many such stable islands of order one over epsilon. So if the islands is uh, almost not visible, the total measure of these islands is of order one. It doesn't depend on epsilon, and this is described by work of Sidorenko, Trishov, Simo, Vasiliev, and myself. So they are indeed perfect stability islands, but we can see them only under very high uh, zoom. So here, for example, you can see this island, but the scale here is uh, much uh, smaller than on vertical direction, but it's perfect island with periodic, stable periodic motion and quasi-periodic motion here. And for motion in this island, the adiabatic invariant is conserved. And this is very general phenomenon. The simplest case is uh, when, for example, <coughs> we have a pendulum problem again considered by Ehrenfest of a slowly in slowly varying gravity field or with slowly varying lengths. If the pendulum just oscillates for all time, we have perpetual adiabatic invariance, uh, invariant curve on Poincaré section. Outside, when pendulum rotates for all time, again, we have invariant curves on Poincaré section. We have periodic change of parameter. But this is domain where pendulum cross uh, ch change regime of motion from rotation to oscillations and back. And here we have chaotic dynamics, but again, inside there are stability islands, and the total measure of these islands is of order of one. This is due to dynamical jumps of adiabatic invariants. Geometrical jumps, they produce a much faster uh, destruction of adiabatic invariants. So it is illustrated here. Uh, so suppose we start at some moment of time outside the separatrix, this red curve, then we come close to separatrix, and then uh, initial condition from this curve, suppose that it's filled by initial conditions, we have a, a trajectory captured, part which is captured in one domain, and part is, which is captured in another domain. Of course, because of continuous dependence of initial conditions, there are other uh, points in the phase space, but the measure is very small. So practically everything is either here or here. But then, so uh, it looks as follows. The area, area surrounded by the separatrix uh, grows, but the area surrounded by uh, trajectories remain about constant. And so at some moment, uh, separatrix is too big and we are forced to be captured here or here. But maybe after that, area surrounded by separatrix shrinks and say this area, oh, sorry. Say uh, this area, area, area uh, shrinks faster and then from this area we come outside of the separatrix but here we are still inside the separatrix. And after this, after some times, we are leave the separatrix also from this, this area as well. And we started with one closed curve of initial conditions. But under one, one, one period, we have there are two possible positions of uh, uh, motion for motion. And after 
the next period it will be four positions and so on. So we have very fast uh, destruction of adiabatic invariance because adiabatic invariance means that we would should just return to our initial position in one period. This was studied by Tereshov and myself under the name of polymorphisms. There is some theory here, but uh, what is important is that we have a very fast mechanism of destruction of adiabatic invariance. It again can be illustrated on the problem of motion of charged particle in a magnetic field of the Earth. But here we, assume, we take into account its asymmetry and also presence of some electric field. I will not discuss the model itself. It's important that we have a double well potential with non-symmetric wells and therefore such phase portrait and slow evolution of this phase portrait when we can uh, cross from outside to one domain on another domain and go outside. And the result is uh, that adiabatic event jump because of geometrical reasons. And we have a trajectory similar to trajectories of previous problems, but with very big jump from one trajectory to another and very fast uh, destruction of adiabatic invariant. So uh, to conclude about passage through separate records, there are two mechanisms here, dynamical jump and geometrical jump, and they sort of uh, additional to, even if here there is a destruction due to geometrical jump, but also dynamical. Then after this, more, there is more slow process related to dynamical jump. The next mechanism which I would like to discuss is a passage through Resonance. So uh, again, we have slow, fast Hamiltonian system with fast variables p and q and slow variables y and x. But I assume now that p and q is a, has a more degrees of freedom, at least two degrees of freedom. So uh, then for frozen value of slow variables, we have a Hamiltonian system with at least two degrees of freedom, and we assume now that it's completely integrable. Therefore, it's possible to introduce action angle variables. And then in adiabatic approximation, we can just average every we could just average everything over motion on the torus. So uh, we have action angle variables with phase space of fast variables is affiliated by invariant tori. Uh, action enumerates tori and phase is a phase on the torus. So if you have two, two dimensional torus, therefore this means that we have two phases. And uh, motion on the torus uh, is quasi-periodic motion and frequency is, uh, to calculate the frequency, we should express our Hamiltonian through action and it depends on slow variables as parameters. And then derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to action is a vector of frequencies. And uh, when we average over torus, we will have adiabatic approximation. In this approximation, action is constant. And for slow variables, we have a Hamiltonian system <coughs> with number degrees of freedom, which is equal to number of slow uh, half number of slow variables. <coughs> <coughs> this uh, description of adiabatic invariance approximation, it is due to Burgers, who was a student of Arenthes at that time, at the beginning of 20th century. But uh, there is a problem here. Uh, action, suppose uh, that action is constant, but slow variables change when we consider the dynamics. And therefore, the vector of frequency change and that we can come to resonance at some moment, to resonant torus, when the ratio of frequency is a rational number. And it was uh, noticed by Dirac uh, in 25. And uh, then we come to resonant torus, we are going to average over the whole torus, but on resonant torus, all trajectories are periodic trajectory, we start periodic trajectory, we start here, we move periodically. So there are problems, we are going to average over the whole torus, but we don't visit 
uh, some part of the store. So clearly there are problems. And it was discussed by Dirac, who uh, derived the first uh, results about accuracy of adiabatic invariance in this case. For two frequency case, because the uh, two frequency case is the most simple case because of simple structure of reson resonances. <coughs> So um, uh, this is the plane of frequencies, and resonance is the line where we have ratio, uh, rational re ratio of frequencies. Therefore, it is straight line with rational flow, uh, close, uh, rational slope. So there is infinite number of resonances, infinite number of such lines. But because uh, and the average trajectory crosses them one by one, and because of this, even the number of resonances infinite, it's possible to consider effect of each resonance separately. And the principal phenomena associated with effect of one resonance is capturing to resonance and scattering of resonance. Uh, they can be described as follows. Uh, this is space of slow variables, and this is the resonance surface the surface of slow variables on which we have resonance. And the average trajectory, trajectory of average approximation crosses the surface because the average system doesn't know anything about resonance. And capture, it can be described as follows. We arrive to this resonance surface and suddenly we start to move along this resonance surface with some oscillation across it. And then we can have escape from the resonance surface. This was, was first described by Chirikov in very influential paper about passage through resonance, and there are, it was rediscovered by many authors, in particular by Galdreich and Peel in descrip description of um, capture of mercury in resonance. This was about um, non-conservative system, non-Hamiltonian system. The phenomena is general, both for Hamiltonian and non-Hamiltonian system. The measure of captured initial condition is small. It is a further square root of small parameter. But initial condition with capture and without capture are mixed in the phase space. So it's reasonable to say, speak about probability of capture. Then this probability is a further square root of epsilon. The scattering into resonance was again described by Chirikov. <clears throat> it consists in the following. We oscillate uh, near average trajectory. When we when arrive to the resonance surface, there is small jump to another trajectory of average system. And uh, this is uh, for almost all, for majority of initial condition, but this amplitude of scattering is small, of order square root of epsilon. Again, this amplitude is very sensitive to initial conditions, so it's reasonable to consider this scattering as a random value. Uh, actually, it, here it looks like the difference is only on scale. This is big of order of one, and this is small of order of square root of epsilon. But, but actually, there is a qualitative difference, dynamics near resonance, and near resonance we can introduce resonant phase. This is angular variables whose frequency vanishes uh, on the resonance. And uh, it's known that uh, dynamics on this phase can be rep described by pendulum-like equation. It's again Chirikov, and uh, in particular case. And uh, there are phase portrait of this motion. Resonance is re well, when frequency of this very vanishes. Therefore, this is uh, this line. And on this po phase portrait, we pass through resonance. On this phase portrait, we pass through resonance. But uh, the, the, the scattering means that actually we jump from one trajectory to nearby one. And capture means that we cross the separatrix and we are captured into this domain. And then we cr cross from the separatrix again, and this is escape. And uh, asymptotically, it's possible to describe everything here, where we have capture, where we have escape, how long we will be captured, and so on. I am going again to illustrate this 
on uh, <clears throat> I'm going again to illustrate this on uh, uh, first of all, I, I would like to describe time scale what is going on here. Uh, we have, uh, suppose we have two slow variables and we have uh, uh, our action, our adiabatic invariant. So adi in, ad in adiabatic approximation, everything is in the plane I is equal to constant. And in this plane, we have a uh, our closed trajectory of our slow motion. And resonance surface is a sort of inclined to this plane. So in the process of motion, we cross many times uh, this resonance surface. What's going on here? On the time of order one over epsilon, so on the time of order one or several crossing of resonance surface, we have a capture of measure square root of epsilon. We have a scattering of measure of order square root of epsilon, but we consider it as a random value and uh, uh, random variables and it has average, non-zero average is of order square root of epsilon and we have some deviation. This is on this time interval. But if we consider many of order one over epsilon, crossing, which means that uh, the one over epsilon square crossing, which means that we have, a, sorry, one over epsilon crossing, we have such time interval, then uh, sorry, one over, on each one over square root of epsilon crossing, such time interval. Then uh, on each crossing, we can have measure of capture of order square root of epsilon, but for many crossing, we have measure of order one. So it's a very important phenomena here. Everything is dominated by it and by uh, scattering because uh, we have average scattering and any time we move a little bit along the resonance surface and for uh, many such crossing, we can move at the distance of order one. This drift was described by Dolgopert under the name of uh, repelling from resonance. And uh, on even longer time interval, the diffusion, the uh, zero average part of scattering started to, to uh, take, uh, be, be important. But it is uh, mainly here, all questions are mainly open. I am going to illustrate this <coughs> again on the motion of charged particle in magnetic field. So uh, suppose we have uh, some background magnetic field motion of charged particle in this magnetic field and uh, electrostatic and or electromagnetic pl plasma wave which <coughs> propagates here. So uh, the most standard situation is when magnetic field is strong, we have very fast more or more motion and we can uh, average over wall motion, but it's not our case. Our case is uh, when magnetic field is weak. And uh, the, it is comparable with the effect of pl this plasma wave, but, the, but this wave is a high frequency wave and we can average over the phase of the wave. So, and uh, when we make this averaging, then uh, it, uh, the effect of the wave disappears, so which have just more motion. But uh, we have a slow wave which propagates not in vacuum, in plasma, and its uh, phase velocity is comparable with the speed of our charged particle. And there could be the points where projection of velocity of charged particle on the wave direction of wave propagation is equal to this velocity, phase velocity of the wave. So for some time, the particles sort of move together with the wave. And uh, it turns out that it's exactly the moment when we have a precious resonance and we can have a capture and scattering here. And uh, we can consider this on example. This is standard equation. V is velocity of the particle. B is background magnetic field. B naught. And B and E are 
magnetic field and electric field of the wave. And there are many such examples. Uh, I will just discuss very briefly. One of them, uh, uh, when we have a, a background magnetic field and uh, the wave propagates inclined to this magnetic field. And uh, <clears throat> when we average the wave, the effect of the wave prop uh, disappears, so we start to move perpendicular to this magnetic field, but we can be captured by the wave and uh, propagate together with the wave. And I will describe very briefly what we have uh, here. We have uh, either energy surface, which is uh, the sphere, uh, Larmor motion, which we have in absence of the wave, is motion on some section, circles, which uh, are some sections of the sphere. And resonance surface is inclined section of the sphere. So the motion is like this. We move on Larmor circle. Then we can be captured by the wave. Then we can have escape and again motion on the Larmor circle, then we can have escape again and again such motion. And uh, this is the corresponding numerics. So motion, Larmor motion, capture, escape, again Larmor motion, capture, and so on. And uh, after uh, many times, we can uh, have uh, the following picture. We start with some uh, domain with some Larmor motion, but after due to these captures and escapes, after a long time, uh, instead of one population of particles, we have uh, two populations, as we can see here. And even the Rano capture, there is a scattering, and uh, there is scattering, and again we have a destruction of adiabatic invariance. This is due to uh, this mechanism. The last mechanism which I am going to discuss, but I will just mention it, that it is motion in a, a magnetic billiard. So a usual billiard is a particle move, there is a smooth curve and particle move uh, along the strong lines, uh, straight lines, and we have an ideal uh, reflection for this line. Uh, and so on. This is an important model. And another model is was introduced by Barry Robnik, also popular, not so popular as usual billiard, when we have magnetic field. So uh, sort of we have, uh, if particles start far away from uh, the, the boundary, we have not billiard at all. But if we start close to boundary, then we are not able to make the whole Larmor circle. We collide with the boundary and uh, uh, we move uh, like this again. There is a motion along the boundary, and uh, therefore uh, uh, it's possible to have adiabatic invariant. It's described by this authors, but we are interested in the case when we have non-uniform magnetic field. Then uh, when we collide, uh, we start far from the boundary. There is so-called gradient drift. We move close to the boundary. Then we can sk have skip motion for the boundary. We skip again and again. It looks it turns out that this change of re regime of motion leads to uh, jumps of adiabatic invariant as well. And this is uh, described. I uh, this in details. I have no time to describe this. So uh, yes. Forty-five past. Sorry. Forty-five minutes past. Ah, so I have uh, still have. Uh, Five no. minutes, am I right? You have zero minutes. Ah, okay. So, <laughs> because uh, I have... Uh, ah, sorry. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, because the title is... Uh, I think I should stop now. And this is the list of references. And uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Anatoly Serovich. Questions, please.
If there are no questions, then thank you very much, Anatoly Serovich. Very thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.